Okay, so good morning, uh, my dear students. Welcome to our uh, virtual class for this morning. Um, I would like to introduce myself to you. I am Maria Anasi Robles, your online learning coordinator or your OLC. I am one of the faculty members of College of Arts and Sciences at AMA Malolo City, Bulacan. Okay, so for our uh, course code we have here, um, UGRD Eng. 6320, Section 1, 421 one and this is Philippine Literature. And our topic for this morning is uh, nonfiction, narrative, and atmosphere. So we have the part one of this topic. And then uh, for our learning objectives, we have here uh, at the end of the discussion, we will be able to define nonfiction and then discuss the characteristics of nonfiction and uh, point out important details in an essay. And lastly, identify the different kinds of nonfiction. So, uh, again, these are our learning objectives for this morning. Okay. So, uh, so our focus is uh, nonfiction. Okay. Now, nonfiction, as we all know, is the broadest category of literature. It is one of the, it is one of the literary genre, along with fiction. Okay. Uh, now, autobiographies. Autobiographies, biographies, uh, memoirs, letters, essays, speeches, and news articles are just a few of the many types of non-fiction writing. So all of these forms of prose concern real rather than imaginary subjects. So it is based on uh, truth, it is based on uh, facts, and um, uh, it is uh, based on true to life, okay? Now, nonfiction writers present information they considered as true. So like fiction, nonfiction writing can be also creative. Now, books that are made up by the author are not true, which are fiction. Okay, uh, nonfiction is the opposite of fiction. So books that are nonfiction or true are about real things, people, events, and places. And this nonfiction gives information. So it explains, informs, or illustrates. So since nonfiction articles tell important information about real people, events, and others, a good nonfiction writer should be able to achieve credibility. So he should be honest with uh, his work, okay? Now, nonfiction text, there may be uh, chapter titles and section headers that preview information. So each page has words in a variety of fonts and type sizes. Now, bold or italic fonts may be used to signal important words or phrases. And they are uh, critical marks may be used to guide pronunciation. Now, uh, the use of graphic aids in nonfiction. So maps, charts, diagrams, photographs are usually included to illustrate or summarize information. So captions or labels must be ex examined carefully for relevant information. Okay, the use of different vocabulary and there may be words uh, that are familiar. 
So look for uh, multisyllabic words like borgus, which may be difficult to pronounce. Okay, for general information, should there is a great deal of information to be understood and remembered. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the different kinds of non fiction. So, first we have a narrative fiction. Okay, so as we all know, when you say narrative, it tells a story or it narrates a story. So it tells a story just as works of fiction do. So autobiographies, memoirs, biographies, and narrative essays are types of narrative nonfiction. So in an autobiography, let's have autobiography first, uh, a writer tells his life in a first person point of view using the pronoun I, okay? Now, and uh, it typically focuses on the different or on the most significant events that happened to him or her, okay? So in a memoir, on the other hand, a writer also uses the first person point of view to relate events from his or her life. So memoirs differs from autobiographies in that uh, is that uh, they typically uh, focus on one period of a person's life. So in a memoir, a writer will tend to emphasize his or, or her relationships with other people of the impact of significant e historical events on his or her own life. So in other words, in um, uh, autobiography and memoir, we usually narrate uh, one's life story. And also in, in biography. Now in uh, a biography, a writer uses the third person point of view to write about the life of someone else. Okay, so uh, in here, the writer uh, writes the life of other person in biography. Now, in a narrative essay, a writer may use either the first or third person point of view to relate a true story in a short composition. So examples include uh, reflective essays, personal essays and journals. And because uh, works of nonfiction tell a story, they may have characteristics of fiction also. For example, they, they may include uh, uh, such elements as setting, character, theme, plot, and conflict. And their organization also may resemble uh, to that of fictional stories. So an author may present events in chronological order or the order in which they occurred. So the author may use flashback, uh, going back in time to present incidents that occurred before the beginning of the story. Okay, so that is narrative uh, nonfiction. Okay, now let's have uh, the informative nonfiction. Now, uh, informative nonfiction includes essays, speeches, and articles that explain a topic or promote an opinion. Okay, and writers of informative nonfiction sometimes weave stories or persona or personal anecdotes into their writing, okay? So from the word itself, informative, so it informs or explains a topic or promote an opinion, okay? Now, what are the different types of informative nonfiction? So we have expository essays, 
which explain a topic. Now, articles that explain the steps in a process, report the news or analyze a work of literature are all examples of expository writing. Uh, examples are analytical essays and research reports, okay, expository essays. And then persuasive essays promote opinion, okay. Now, advice columns, movie reviews, and editorials are all examples of persuasive writing. So many persuasive and expository essays follow a general structure of lead, body, and conclusion. So examples are editorials and political speeches. And then another type of informative nonfiction is descriptive essays. Uh, this uses details related to the senses to create mental images for the reader or for the readers. Description, it's more on description. So examples are character sketches and scientific observation, okay? Now, uh, the lead or introduction captures the reader's attention and often includes a thesis or statement of the essay's main idea. Now, the body, on the other hand, develops the main idea by providing supporting details such as facts, reasons, quotations, statistics, sensory details, examples, observations, and personal experiences. Now, the conclusion may restate the main idea, summarize the essay's main points, or leave the reader with something to think about. So a persuasive essay may end with a call to action. Okay, so those are the different uh, characteristic or rather the different uh, kinds of nonfiction. So again, we have uh, narrative and informative nonfiction. So let's go on with the characteristics of nonfiction. Now works of nonfiction differ from works of fiction in several ways. First, the people, events, places, and ideas are presented uh, or presented in nonfiction are real. They are not invented. Okay. And then nonfiction is narrated by an author who is a real person or the uh, writer or the author. And it also presents facts, describes truth to life experiences, or discusses ideas. Okay. Now, another one, nonfiction is written for a specific audience or group of readers. So in addition, it addresses a clear purpose or reason for writing. Now, the audience and purpose influence the type of information a writer includes. So tone, the author's attitude toward the subject or the reader, is displayed through the writer's word choice and style. So these are the different characteristics of nonfiction. Okay. Now, other other information, uh, other information that the writer contributes to nonfiction are the following. First, we have the style. Now, uh, the style is the way the writer uses the language. So it reflects the writer's personality. So the author's style includes the level of formality, the word of uh, the word choice, sentence construction, and methods of organization of ideas and others. Now, second is tone. 
Okay? Tone is the author's attitude toward his work and his readers. Now, as you read the writer's work, you feel his seriousness, his friendliness, his personality, uh, his sar uh, sarcasm, happiness, and others. Okay. And aside from style and tone, we have also perspective. It is the point of view of the author or of the writer. So it is how he expresses about his topic, either directly or indirectly. And also another one is the purpose. It is the author's reason for writing. His purposes may be to, to inform, to explain, to persuade or to convince, to honor, entertain, and to warn. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, information that the writer contributes to nonfiction. Okay, and uh, in analyzing fiction, you have to consider this one. When you analyze nonfiction, begin by uh, identifying the type of work you are reading. By looking at the title and skimming the beginning, you can uh, usually tell whether the work is an autobiography or a memoir, a biography, an essay, or another type of nonfiction writing. So identifying the author's uh, purposes as you read may help you further classify the work. So this is the focus of your essay. Okay. So does the author seek to entertain? Does the author seek to inform or to persuade and convince the reader? And the answer will help you tell whether you are reading a narrative, an expository, or a persuasive essay. Now, the content is an essential part of your essay. So remember that. This considers your controlling purpose because it urges you to discover if there are enough details to support your controlling purpose. So be sure that the details are aligned to the focus of your essay. Okay? So this is how you analyze non-fiction, okay? So um, this is all for the day about uh, non-fiction, narrative, non-fiction, and atmosphere. So this is the part one of the topic. So thank you for attending our uh, virtual class for this morning. So keep safe, everyone, and God bless us all. Thank you.